startups and timing, one of the things you hear from any number of people in the industry that so much of a startup success is just based on the timing. In fact, there's this really great TED Talk by Bill Gross that kind of goes through all this analysis that says, you know, doesn't matter if you have a great product and a great team, great focus, great market, so much of it still relies upon the timing of when that startup is being built or when it's entering the market. And that, that just always feels a little <laughs> too random and defeatist to me. And so one thing I always remind founders to think of is, yes, there are certain things occurring, there's certain timing, but you have control over how your startup or your product is positioned during that time. So what I encourage you to do is think about what's going on in the market. Think about where your competition is and use those metrics to make a decision about how you position your product in the market. And one, I'll give you one aspect to focus on to start thinking through this because I don't hear many people talk about this. And it, you know, I learned it in the software industry but it's, it's really broadly applicable to any industry, so don't just think this is, only applies to tech companies. But there's kind of this cycle that the, the mar any market and the industry go through, and the cycle is kind of this best of breed when they're the most products down to one-stop shop where they're the least products focused on what you're trying to accomplish, and then it cycles back to best of breed. What happens is people are looking for a solution to a problem. There are multiple solutions out there, but no one does everything that everyone needs. So everyone winds up cobbling together these kind of best of breed solutions. They have multiple products from multiple companies to accomplish one single task or, or to solve one single problem. And then the market starts to aggregate or larger players in the market start to add functionality that takes out smaller players in the market. And that's when it gravitates towards this kind of one-stop shop where you could go to one place, one company, potentially one product, and have your problems solved. So when you think about maybe the biggest player in kind of one-stop shop over the past 20 years or so, you immediately think of Google. Google is search and search is Google, and it, it had become that one-stop shop, even though prior to Google, there were 10, if not 20 competing search engines trying to solve that issue, and everybody had their favorite. Um, but as Google became more and more dominant, it became the one-stop shop. So best of breed is when there are many solutions either are solving the same problem or solving parts of the problem and people are gravitating toward the best possible solution to get that get that problem solved and then it will it will cascade down to one stop shop which is when one company or one solution can offer the product or the solution that solves those solves the problem for the end user so as a startup what does this mean to you well when the industry is in a best of breed part of the cycle, you should be thinking about things like how you differentiate from immediate competitors, what other facets of the problem can you work to solve once you've established kind of traction in the market, and how can you beat out the variety of different folks who are approaching this problem. How can you position a unique feature or a unique way you're addressing the problem that will make you seem like the only viable solution for a portion of the market? Not the entire market, just a portion of the market. So when you're in best of breed, there's lots of competition. You have to really negotiate your feature set so that you appear to be different and better 
than the companies you're competing with for a particular segment of the market. Again, you don't have to try and address the whole market. You just have to address that segment of the market for whom you designed your solution. And that will give you a good chance of competing there. When everything comes to one-stop shop, then you're really just presenting your solution as a differentiated solution to the dominant player. So back to the Google example, think of something like DuckDuckGo, or now more and more uh, OpenAI and ChatGPT positioning themselves as a solution to traditional search and, and how those problems are solved. And now you see that market, even with the dominant players, you see Meta playing in that space, you see Google playing in that space, you see Microsoft playing in that space, you see all of the major tech companies trying to build a best of breed solution for whatever is that kind of search killer. So it's not just startups that deal with this, it's well-established corporations that deal with this as well. So yes, is it timing? Sure, absolutely, timing is a key factor. But you as a startup founder, using that timing and the dynamics of the market to your advantage may ensure that you have a better chance of winning and surviving as a startup.